Mustang Marvel. Yay! It is truly iconic. It's something awesome to see. Everything is my favorite feature. <laughs> a reimagined William Square Plaza debuts, and we are showing you all of the upgrades and talking about the anticipated impact. Animal attraction. I think they're going to bite me. <laughs> Kids get an up-close experience with animals in an improved exhibit at Fritz Park. See some of the fun. And this school knows how to party. See how their work for a good cause led to this good time with police. Everything is just crazy and it's really cool. Plus, an exhibit recognizes the multicultural ties to America's pastime and fiesta fun on the run. Now on City Source. A special ceremony honors the memory of Irving police officers who died in the line of duty. Hello and welcome to City Source. I'm Thomas Gandy. That story is coming up, but first, the most recognizable site in Irving reopened after nearly $8 million in improvements. William Square Plaza has new features designed to make it more inviting and attractive. We were there for the opening celebration. Three, two, one. William Square Plaza reopens after months of improvements. The most iconic site in Irving has new features and a restored sculpture as the centerpiece. It's an incredible transformation that we've seen here at William Square. Today the heart's pounding because of the excitement. What a great day. Hundreds of people turned out to celebrate and see what's new. I can't tell you how proud I am uh, to see this happen. We're just so excited for the city of Irving and what this brings to our community. We followed a lot of the progress. Crew sandblasted the Mustangs as part of a process to get them back to their original color after decades of exposure to the elements. Sculptor Robert Glenn stayed involved throughout. So what they've done now is absolutely perfect. Uh, to be able to communicate with him live and then show him FaceTime while we were refinishing the horses was just unbelievable and he was so excited. As we're going to sweep in from the side. We'll look Teams working on this project included some of the original companies involved in the plaza's construction and everyone involved recognized the significance of the site. When I was a kid we'd come out here on field trips and eat lunch. I think everybody has a William Square experience. Among the upgrades they added a lot of landscaping and green space to soften the vibe. We have the prime view. A lot of people working in William Square have been watching and waiting for the completion. It's been a destination for us to bring our guests, especially outer towners, to, you know, it's been a landmark for such a long time. But it was always a little bit of a challenge enjoying it because of the sun. And, and now I think it's gonna be a lot more fun. This plaza now, this area now will now be able to be used in the really hot months because we've added some shading area, we've added some sitting areas. And that could bring even more visitors. Already it has attracted people from all seven continents, all seven. And there are now new ways to view the horses, including from this platform. I can see the photo ops happening all over the space. And I think we'll see a lot of that pretty quickly on social. Oh, it's beautiful. Making an impact online. So where are you going to be posting that? Instagram, Snapchat. And on business. And this is going to be a significant attraction to help recruit and retain our top quality businesses that we have here in Irving. It all adds up to a positive difference for residents. More functional, usable space for public to come out and enjoy. It's just amazing what, what we've been able to accomplish here through the partnerships to rebuild the plaza and to refurbish the Mustangs. <laughs> Now, William Square Plaza is a place for new memories, as the site that led to the symbol now seen all over the city is even more iconic. It's something awesome to see. A few other notes to pass along on this. That plaza is now designated as a city park, open for everyone to visit. And some of the improvements will not be seen by the public. Underground, all of the infrastructure for the fountains was replaced to make it last for decades to come. That was a big job. Also, the Mustang Museum is expected to reopen this summer at Williams Square. It will feature other works of sculptor Rob Glenn and tell the history of the Mustangs through several exhibits. When the museum reopens, it will also serve as a visitor center for the city of Irving. Police agencies across the country marked National Police Week with ceremonies honoring fallen officers. In Irving, people gathered for a special service at Veterans Memorial Park. 
This is National Police Week. Now, we're here today to honor the men and women, uh, not only the Irving Police Department, but the officers across the country who have lost their lives in the line of duty. Let's remember our Irving officers, Officer Glenn Holmes, Officer Aubrey Hawkins, Officer Andrew Albert Esparza. It's been a really hard journey. We lost our son in 2007, and it's been a really hard for us. But I do want to say and thank all the community for never forgetting. To continue to honor these officers is a must for our department. You know, we, we hashtag and we say it a lot, never forget, and that's exactly what we're doing here today. All across the country, at departments in every state and city, the same ceremonies are going on. Unfortunately, the work our officers do is becoming increasingly more difficult and dangerous. Please continue to pray for the officers because they're out here to take care of you guys. We can't ever forget what these officers gave up so that others in our community can be safe and, and have liberty and freedom. And you can see more police coverage by checking out the Irving Police Department playlist at youtube.com slash the city of Irving. A runoff election is set for June 18th for Irving City Council single member district place one. The candidates are Tony Grimes and John Block. The runoff is required because none of the three candidates that ran in that race garnered a majority of votes as required by city charter. Election day, as I mentioned, is on June 18th. Early voting runs June 6th through June 14th. More details on all of this are at cityofirving.org slash elections. On to other stories now. Visitors to Fritz Park can get an up-close look at a range of animals. The Animal Connection Experience just opened for the season, and Robert Sheik got a look at some of the fun. The Fritz Park Petting Farm celebrated its summer reopening, and everyone brought an appetite. From goats, to porcupines, and even this child. <laughs> that excited youngster is Keith. His grandmother, Deborah Thornton, has visited Fritz Park for more than four decades now. Of course, it's a little bit different now, but the petting zoo was here that long ago. Last summer, Irving Parks and Recreation partnered with a company called Animal Connection to bring a wider variety of fauna to Fritz Park. Taking a little nap. What used to be a couple dozen animals is now a few hundred. They not only have the animals that you historically see in a North Texas uh, uh, petting farm, but they've got a lot of exotic animals and things that you normally wouldn't see here. To accommodate more animals and visitors, the city upgraded the facility over the winter. Among the renovations, new lining in the pond, repairs to wooden structures, refurbished play areas, and a fresh coat of paint. Before, it was kind of a hodgepodge of different colors, and everything now is painted in a red, white, or black, so it does have a barnyard feel. The new upgrades to Fritz Park have seemingly everyone grinning ear to ear. I love coming here. I love that it's in Irving. We've lived in Irving all of our lives, and we've come here every summer multiple times, and she just loves it. While a few animals were camera shy, most were jumping for joy, hanging out, and getting their first peek at the newly revamped park. What do you think of your new house? What do you guys think of the new park? Uh, or do you just want to eat this microphone? We couldn't get an official comment from the animals, but hey, that's likely because we ran out of food. I think they're gonna bite me. <laughs> Robert Sheik for City Source. Some cute ones to see there. The Animal Connection Experience is open through July 30th. Wednesdays through Saturdays, the hours are 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. And on Sunday, it's open noon to 5. Fritz Park is located on East Vilbig Street. Admission is $4 for Irving residents. And we note that Animal Connection is a USDA licensed operation. The city of Irving is working to hire more lifeguards and there is a change that will make more people eligible to apply. The minimum age is now 15 years old. Learn more about the certification requirements and find a link to apply at cityofirving.org slash lifeguards. This is the time of year when we can start feeling the bite of more mosquitoes. The city's code enforcement team has traps throughout the city and captured mosquitoes are tested for disease. Additionally, there are the four Ds residents can follow to help protect themselves. Stay inside at dusk and dawn when mosquitoes are most active. Dress in long sleeves and pants. Use a repellent containing DEET and drain standing water that can become a mosquito breeding ground. Learn more at irvingfightsthebite.org. 
An exhibit at the Irving Archives and Museum takes a look at the history and culture of Latinos through the lens of baseball. Play ball in the barrios and the big leagues is on display through June 19th, and Robert Sheik learned more about it. Clemente, Sosa, Martinez, some of the biggest names in baseball history. Hola! From Hall of Famers to Little Leaguers, Latin Americans are as much a part of our national pastime as home runs and strikeouts. That's the theme of play ball in the barrios and the big leagues. Currently on display at the Irving Archives and Museum. It looks at that history and trajectory of how an American pastime has really become a America writ large sport. From stickball leagues in East Harlem to immigrants working in sugar beet fields, this Smithsonian traveling exhibit tells the story of how baseball has become woven into the fabric of Latin American society. Even before it was professional baseball players being able to play the sport, there were organized leagues and activities, and it was a real community gathering in a way that they basically Americanized. You don't have to be a baseball know-it-all to enjoy play ball. And even if you are, you'll definitely learn a thing or two here. Do you remember the film, A League of Their Own? Well, the movie left out the fact that 11 Latinas played in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League before Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. It's really about culture. How do you come together as a community and what connections can you make to form community bonds? And the baseball field was just a really great environment for that to happen. Fields of dreams and communities that have left their stamp on the game of baseball. Robert Sheik for City Source. The Irving Archives and Museum is open Wednesdays through Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. It is located in the Jack D. Huffman Community Building next to City Hall. For admission prices and more details, visit irvingarchivesandmuseum.com. <laughs> Hundreds of runners turned out for the Fiesta de Mayo 5K, 10K, and Half Marathon. This is part of the Irving Marathon Running Series, and this one features some cultural entertainment on the Texas Lottery Plaza at the Toyota Music Factory. We even spotted Spider-Man among the runners, and a lot of people wanted to snap a picture with him. Our team caught up with some of the participants just after they crossed the finish line. It makes me healthier. It makes me healthier. It gives me more energy during the day. Um, it's going to hopefully increase my life, my longevity, all those different things. I'm thinking long term. This is actually my first event as, as a, like in a city here in the U.S. I think it's not only great for the body, but it helps the mind as well. I think it's just like for my mental health, because running is almost like meditation for me. So when I'm out there on a regular run, it's just I can reflect, process the week or process the day and just kind of like think about things and relax. I think it also benefits me socially. You meet a lot of great people and um, you get to participate in, in ways to give back to the community as well. So it's all around just a great, great cause. Yeah, and talking more about that good cause, the Irving Marathon Running Series raises funds for the Irving Schools Foundation. The series picks back up on October 1st for Oktoberfest. Sign up and learn more at irvingmarathon.com. The city of Irving is developing a citywide bicycle plan. The goal is to make it easier for all people to use their bikes on street to help them get around the city and region. The first public meeting on this is on Tuesday, June 7th at 6 p.m. on the first floor of City Hall. The bike plan will identify priority corridors for implementation and next steps. The plan will take about a year to complete. Learn more at cityofirving.org slash bike plan. The Irving Police Department teamed up with local schools to raise more than $40,000 for Special Olympics. It is always a friendly rivalry between campuses to see which one can raise the most money. This year, for the first time, Brandenburg Elementary came out on top, and for their efforts, they won an ice cream party with police. Check it out. Today we're celebrating with Brandenburg Elementary having won the pity drive for Special Olympics. Uh, I think it's like a party. We raised more actually than we ever have and more than we could have imagined, so it's amazing. They raised $17,720 alone. That's got to be some kind of record. It is. They surpassed all the other schools by a mile. We've won second place for so many years in a row, and we're happy to finally get first place. Smile, everybody. Oh my gosh, words cannot describe how proud I am of my students and teachers. Hey, 
It's fun. Everything is just crazy and it's really cool. And we bring out the command post and fire trucks and we just have a good time. It's very exciting. Come out here, just doing something, being a part of the community, having the little kids slow through here and them cheering us on. When all the cops come here and all the firefighters come here, we get to go through the trucks and it's super cool. The experience that our kids have with the police officers is priceless. It's very fun. Everybody clap your hands. We made sure that the children understood what it was they were working for. We're raising money for the Special Olympics. I have a son that's 36. They've been blessed with Down syndrome. What do you think of what Oregon Police have done? I think this is awesome. They do a lot of work and put in a lot of effort for our organization. We're just so happy to be back. You know, we haven't been able to do this since 2019. So being able to get back this year and have such a successful penny drive, now we're ready for next year to get here. Yeah, we had a lot of fun out there covering that one. Brandenburg, by the way, is the largest elementary school in Irving. Sparks and Stripes. That is the theme for the City of Irving's big 4th of July celebration. The City of Irving's special events team is accepting applications for groups wanting to participate in this year's Independence Day Parade. The deadline to apply is June 20th. Find the link at irvingevents.org. And that parade is at 9 a.m. on Monday, July 4th in downtown Irving. And it will be followed by a watermelon reception in Heritage Park. A lot of tradition with that event. And that evening, the fun moves to Levy Event Plaza for live music, fireworks, and a spectacular water show. We'll be sharing more details on all of this in the weeks to come. And again, irvingevents.org is the site to watch for updates. The On Stage at Heritage series is drawing people to the newly expanded Heritage Park. Already this year, people have turned out for trivia, movie night, and more. On Stage at Heritage continues on June 10th with live music from Donovan Keith. July 8th is movie night with Raya and the Last Dragon showing on the big screen. All events start at 6.30 p.m. Organizers say you may want to bring a lawn chair or blanket. Events continue the second Friday of each month through September. It is time now for our Pets of the Week, so let's check in with the Animal Care Campus and Michael Whiteside with the DFW Humane Society. Michael, who do you have to show us today? Well, we've got two awesome dogs today. I mean, all of our dogs are awesome, but these two are particularly awesome. And they're, of course, big dogs because that's what we have a lot of in the shelter right now. But the first one we're gonna talk about is Buck. Buck is about two years old. He is an Australian cattle dog, Catavula mix. And he was originally adopted from us when he was about four months old. About a year later, his owner returned him saying that he was showing signs of aggression. Coming back into the shelter the first couple of months were difficult for him, but he has come such a long way. He's a smart, smart guy, knows lots of commands. Like one of our volunteers has been working with him regularly and he really actually enjoys being around other dogs. And we've actually just recently taken him to two different mobile events, which is a huge step. And he's done fantastic at both of them. So he's going to be really a great companion for just about anybody. And next we have one with an unusual name, Leonidas. Tell us about Leonidas. Yeah, uh, so Leonidas is about a year and a half. He is a pit bull mix. And the reason I chose him today is because he and Buck are like best buds. They are always in the play yard together. The kennel attendants always make sure, and volunteers make sure those two go out together because they really enjoy playing together and just have a great time. They're not asking if they go home together, but it's a great way to see how good both of them interact with other dogs. Um, and Leonidas is kind of like our test dog around here because he is so good with so many dogs that if we need to do a dog test to see how they'll do with another dog, we'll usually try and pair them up with Leonidas because he is just an amazing dog. He loves other dogs, he loves people. He's just an all around great guy and really deserves a fantastic home. And we talk a lot about dogs, but we don't want to forget the cats. There is a big goal for a special this summer at the Animal Care Campus. Tell me about that. Yeah, so usually every time around this year, you know, because we're so full of cats and kittens, typically June and July, we typically will do a cat adoption special. June is actually adopt a shelter cat month. And so this year, what we wanted to do is kind of set a goal. So for June and July, for the entire Irving Animal Care Campus, we want to set a goal of adopting out 500 cats and kittens. So starting June 1st, we're gonna have our adoption special, the summer of 500 lives, which will be um, all of our cats that are one year and older will be free to adopt. 
and kittens will only be $50, which will be kind of a reduced adoption fee for the kittens. Um, but what we really want to do is stress the importance of how many animals, cats especially, that we have in the shelter during the summer months and really work hard to get as many of those animals out of the shelter as we can um, in preparation for the end of the summer and the fall. And we actually have a happy tale to talk about today. A few weeks back, last time we did Pet of the Week, we profiled Huey, who now has the name Flynn. Our director editor, Stefan, adopted Huey. How does that make you feel when you see these dogs get into such great homes? Um, it has been fantastic. Plus, I always get to hear some updates about Flynn, which is awesome because he was one of my favorites when he was here. I mean, we took him off site for that filming that we did at the park. He's an amazing dog and I know he's got an amazing home, but it's so great to hear some great updates about him and, and see how he's thriving in his new home. And hopefully this segment will lead to many more happy tales to share with you and all of the viewers. And Flynn stops by sometimes, so you'll have to come visit when he's over here. Definitely. <laughs> all right, the Animal Care Campus is located at 4140 Valley View Lane. You can check out the websites you see on your screen for the hours and to see more adoptable animals. Thanks so much, Michael. Thank you so much, Thomas. Appreciate it. People are coming together to mark Memorial Day during a special ceremony. We will have coverage next time on City Source. And Irving's newest police chief will be sworn in. We'll show you that and hear from him about his priorities for the department. And remember our coverage of some young people taking part in an American Ninja Warrior style course? Those students participated in a big finale event. Those stories and more next time. Remember, you can always email us your thoughts on our stories. The address is ictn at cityofirving.org. Also find us on YouTube. Our channel is at youtube.com slash the city of Irving. And while you're there, keep in mind that we always appreciate the likes and positive comments. And look for updates on events and initiatives across the major social media platforms at the city of Irving. And that's it for this edition of City Source. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.